I have multiple Alexas around the house. Am I doomed? Hey everyone, this is Digital Charcuterie. Thanks for stopping by. If you're enjoying Dune Prophecy, hit that subscribe button. I talk about it every week. And I am enjoying the show. We're four episodes in, six in total with two to go. And things are really starting to heat up. I thought the series was a slow burn game to this point. I said it before, but I've enjoyed it. And one thing this show has done, as it has found ways to end every episode in such a compelling way that I'm like, damn it! <laughs> Can't wait for next week. Some spoilers ahead for episode four of Dune Prophecy. So if you haven't hit, seen it, hit that pause button. Go watch the first three episodes. I'll see you in just over three hours. I thought this one, episode four, had a little bit of a slow start to it. But once it started picking up, I'm like, okay, here we go, here we go. And I really, really enjoyed it, especially after last week's you know, great ending that they had leading into this one. How are we going to learn more? Will we learn more? What's going to happen? You know, the flashback setting the stage for what's to come. Really enjoyed this episode especially like i said the ending of this episode is when it really kind of like figured itself out found its footing and is like all right two to go now the stakes have never been higher stages are set the chess pieces are on the board and now where are we going with it and desmond hart continues to intrigue continues to compel me in a way that i'm like i really don't know where they're going now the sister had had his has his blood we'll get into that in a little bit and they're going to discover who he is and what his purpose in all of this the grand purpose that he serves in the universe is and i'm excited to see that this episode was all about carino basically and valia wanting to reclaim her place in the imperium kind of taking over the universe the galaxy things like that like this was her plot and play and then you see how it all kind of starts to fall apart on her uh, but she's got a house Harkonnen back and as one of the big great houses in the Dune universe. So obviously she's excited about that. But of course her plan doesn't go the way uh, she she planned it to go. Because that's not how, you know, it wouldn't be compelling if that were the case. But I thought this was a, a really good episode. I want to learn more about Desmond Hart. Obviously Lila comes back at the very end. And there are some face dancing as well. Which was like, whoa, what's going on here? I thought the shape shift, I thought that was really cool. Really excited to see where the next two episodes go. Kind of hard to say. I think, you know, are we going to go to Iraq? It feels like all roads are leading in that direction. All the, the reckoning dreams are heading in a direction of sandworm action. Uh, so we'll see where we go there. But the stakes have never been higher. And I was really, and I really enjoyed what they were doing, what they were bringing here. And watching, you know, everybody with an AI tool that was at the council just... Desmond Hart just took them all out and we saw the sacrifice that his body takes every time he does it and Carino said never again you can't do that we can't let your body go through this and he you know he talks about the great pain that he's in doing it but you see like the loyalty that he has the supposed loyalty that he has to the Imperium is he actually loyal or is he trying or is he working for somebody who's trying to get an upper hand in the Imperium like there's a lot of I play here I was like oh man he's really you know, in, in well with the Emperor, but is he or is he not? Is there something else here? Is he just doing what Valia is doing on the other side, right? Are they trying to find their place in the galaxy, trying to take over the galaxy in their own right, have the, all the power to themselves? Who is he with? What is his purpose? Who is he working for? We're on the road to finding that out. We know things are happening uh, there, which obviously, like I said, like Valia has his blood. When he did, when he took everyone out, he was beaten and battered and bloody, and he put his hand down as he looked at Valia, and he left the stain. And she did. And she did. She wasted no time. She's smart. She's a smart cook. I like Valia. She, she's got some going on. I will say, Carino. You know, I really like Mark Strong, but I feel like he's just not getting enough in this show. Like he's, and that's not. It's a weird criticism because the character is serving the character's purpose, but I feel like you might not have needed Mark. It's great to have Mark Strong, but maybe you didn't need Mark Strong in that role unless he, well, I don't know there's two more episodes to go we'll see what happens there really excited but this was look I enjoyed it let me know what you guys thought of this episode in the comments down below love to hear it love to read it let's talk some Dune Prophecy where do you think this is going and if you are like, super knowledgeable with the, the books and the source material do you know where it's going are you like well this is clearly ending up here you know that for a fact or is this show deviating uh, from the source material and going in its own direction, ending up where it wants to end up, which might be a good thing, might be a bad thing, depends on how it is. But this is my review of episode four of Dune Prophecy. 
Episode 4 continues, continued captivating me with its blend of political intrigue, personal vendettas, and ever-expanding mythology of the Dune universe. Building on the strong foundation of previous episodes, this installment returned to the present timeline, advancing the storylines of the Bene Gesserit Sisterhood and key players like Valia and Desmond Hart. The episode dove deeper into Valia's past and her ongoing struggles with her family's disdain for her strength and ambition because she's a witch. A particularly charged reunion with her uncle highlighted her determination to redefine her place in both her family and the larger political landscape. This dynamic served as a powerful commentary on the personal sacrifices required to wield power, which has been a recurring theme in the Dune saga. Desmond Hart emerges as an even greater enigma with his Shai Halud granted abilities continuing to pose a threat to the Imperium, his influence over the House Carino adds layers of suspense, especially as a sisterhood begins to experience apocalyptic visions involving a black spiral, a potent symbol of chaos and reckoning. This ominous prophecy heightens the stakes for both the Bene Gesserit and the larger political order. The visual storytelling remains a highlight with sweeping desert vistas juxtaposed against the haunting interiors of the Sisterhood's chambers. While episode 4 adds depth to the story, it also raises questions about the show's pacing. With only a few episodes remaining in the season, it leads us to speculate that the scope of the narrative will require a second season to fully explore the rise of the Bene Gesserit and the lingering threats posed by Dem Desmond and others. So what ultimately is the purpose of just one season? Or is the second season promised and will it happen for sure? Because if it's not going to happen for sure, that is problematic if it ends on a cliffhanger, which at this point I'm suspecting it'll be a subtle cliffhanger. I don't think we'll get, I don't think they'll leave anything too major lingering, but I think we will get a subtle cliffhanger. Overall, I found the fourth episode a gripping continuation of the Dune Prophecy Saga that balances character development with the epic world building fans can expect. With its rich themes and escalating tension, it solidifies the show's place is a standout entry in Max's lineup of original programming. I really love the children dynamic with Carino, how his daughter was like, I'm going to call you out, I'm going to rat you out, like, everyone needs to know the truth. And his son, his illegitimate son, was kind of like, ah, this might not be a good idea. And he kind of tips his hat to Carino at the end saying, I just wanted to wish you luck, giving Carino a pause, like what is actually at play here. I love that dynamic. I love the infighting that's going on. And there's a misunderstanding of who everyone is in this universe. Everyone is trying to use everyone to gain some sort of leverage. And that's going to come to a head in the coming weeks. I'm very excited to see where that all where that all leads. I love that, you know, when we were entering the show, they brought up the Great Machine Wars a lot, and I was curious how much that would play into it, or if that was just going to be a backdrop, but it's playing a major factor in this, obviously. We see an AI toy being used once again in this episode, and that person perishes, because anybody with one at Desmond Hart just destroys everyone, burning them from the inside, and you see the pain and the agony that they're in, and then you see what it causes to Desmond Hart. And I'm really curious what that trail is going to find. And then, of course, at the end, and Tula discovers that Lila is alive. Lila has come back from the dead, and she is in the AI temple that the sisterhood has deep within, and she asks the question of where is she? And that was where I thought it was going to end, but then it kept going a few more scenes. And then, of course, we saw that there was a face dancer, and there's some shape-shifting action going on here when Valia is confronted by her deceased brother Griffin, and they have a very nice moment there. And then all of a sudden, the shape-shifting begins, the face-dancing begins, and we discover that this person is actually Theodosia, adds even more questions that need to be answered in the coming weeks, and I cannot wait to see what they do with this. I'm looking forward to next week's episode. It's been so much fun to watch these. I can't believe there's only two left. It's wild how fast six weeks can fly by, but here we are. It's been like a month of this show, and I'm really enjoying it. I hope you guys are too. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. It's not forever. It's definitely not a show for everybody, but let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. You like it? Do you hate it? Are you looking forward to a second season or not? Thanks for watching, everybody. Give us a like and subscribe. Until ne next time, maybe the master of your own universe.